hello. Welcome to my show, Olio. My name is Susan Rushton, and as always, I have to, I get to, I'm privileged to uh, explain what Olio means. One definition is that it's short for Oya Padrida, which is Spanish for rotten bowl, or maybe rotten pot. Um, and it's a Spanish Portuguese dish with essentially everything in the world in it. Pork in all its iterations, bacon and sausage and uh, there's a there's a pig's head in there someplace. Um, chicken, chickpeas, cabbage, carrots, beans, uh, no, a pig's ear, pig's ear. Onions and garlic, as I, and so as I said, essentially everything in the world in it except pistachios and Nutella. That's one definition. Another definition is that oleo is co what comes in between acts of a melodrama. So you might have somebody juggling, you might have somebody singing a song, you might have somebody doing a skit, and none of it has anything to do with anything else, and certainly none of it has anything to do with the melodrama. So in other words, it's apples, oranges, and a monkey wrench. So welcome to my monkey wrench. Today, my guests, I learned about the group they belong to when a friend of mine sent me a photograph of the 49er Business Association, I guess, people involved with the 49er Business Association. Are you guys involved with the 49er Business Association? Uh, we're Some... not. One of our members is. Okay. Okay. Um, and, I, and the picture was people who are in gold country amputees. And I was, oh, yes. This would be a great show for Auburn Community Television, for Olio, and I immediately got in touch with the group, and these three guys, Dan Wheat, who is president, in between Nick Temple, and then Carlos Lopez, I got in touch with Carlos, who said, yes, we are interested, and we would be delighted, <laughs> absolutely delighted, <laughs> to join you, Susan. So here they are. So. Dan, you are president of Gold Country Amputees. I am. What is Gold Country Amputees? Gold Country Amputees is um, a group of amputees and their support, wives, spouses, whatever, um, that meet every other Thursday. And at the meetings, we uh, exchange information, uh, something that's happening with one amputee, and he's looking to resolve it. Uh, he has all the resources of those other amputees in the room uh, to answer that question or point him in the right direction. We bring uh, professionals in, uh, people that make these prosthetics, um, health professionals, uh, health, uh, uh, different kinds of food advocates. And because one of the things you have to do if you're going to walk around with one of these devices, you have to keep yourself healthy. And uh, so there's. You know, we can't do a lot of times the same kind of uh, exercising that um, a, a full-bodied person would do. So there are alternatives to that to keep yourself in shape. And we bring those people in to educate us. Okay, good. Um, where do you meet? We meet at the Black Bear Diner um, in Auburn. Okay. Every other Thursday night. Um, a lot of us get there at 5 o'clock, we have dinner from 5 to 6, and at 6 o'clock we have a meeting that normally lasts an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Um, you have a guest speaker, um, and again, we use that to, uh, if somebody has something in particular that they want to talk about or a problem they're having, they'll speak out to the group to see if somebody has a resolution to whatever the problem might be. Okay, so the, I am, thrilled to hear this, that you meet every twice a month. Twice a month, yeah. And that you ha there's enough people who come and enough people willing to speak to you, with you, and enough uh, information that you can, that you can share, th different information. That's great. Um, I, there's something I didn't mention, um, and that is that Gold Country Amputees has a, has a website, goldcountryamputees.com, and if you want to email the group, gcamputeesg at gmail.com, goldcountryamputees.com, gcamputeesg at gmail.com. They meet every other Thursday, Thursday night 
at Black Bear Diner in Auburn in the evening. So, we yes. We are also on Facebook. So you're, it's oh, a, yeah. You're also a, on Facebook. Yes, I've got uh, three different places that they, uh, individuals can look us up uh, to find out what our group is all about. I post pictures on our Facebook page almost daily of different situations. So it's, it's there. When you, say, when you say different situations, what you uh, mean? Different pe uh, people all over, the, not only California, but all over the United States that are amputees that have posted on the, on the Facebook page of their situation, which I then share it with everybody else that are amputees to see if they can solve this problem. Ah. And have they? Oh, yeah. You, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's m uh, much help out there. Uh, people just don't know where to get it at this time, basically, um, and they don't know where to go to get it. So that's why we have these uh, Facebook pages and websites, and and it's great. It works out perfect. I can imagine. I'm th Im imagining myself waking up and thinking, "Okay, I'm lost now." I don't have an arm. I don't have my 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 foot. I uh, what what <laughs> what in heaven's name am I going to do? Um, and this is I'm assuming, and I'll bet I'm correct that this is not an unusual f thought process to go through. No, there there are more. There are about. 14,000 new amputees in California every year. 14,000. And about 70,000 across the United States. Every year. Every year. And is this, we were talking, Dan, before we started taping, and you were saying that, that a lot of it is, and a lot of the awareness of, of ampute, amputees is due to, um, the the media focus on uh, veterans coming back. Yes, but, but is this so? So is this this is not? But this is not just uh, war injuries. Oh no, not at all. You know, their um, uh, diabetes is number one cause of amputation. About half of all amputations are caused by diabetes. Um, cancers and bone cancers are, are another big one, um, but. Uh, Blood clots, uh, which is uh, aneurysm, how uh, I lost my leg, um, and a lot, of, a lot of the folks in our group, um, accidents, motorcycle accidents, car accidents, um, like Nick was, uh, it was a logging truck, wasn't it? What? Yeah, I, I was in a <laughs> logging accident uh, back in 1988, and I didn't think I was going to live through it. Uh. And when I woke up, I, I didn't, I was mad because I lived through it. And what was I going to do, you know? So now I... If you died, you wouldn't have had to deal with it. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but of course, you know, nobody wants to die. No, you know? no. But um, I've learned to live with it, but we didn't have a support group when I got hurt. I didn't get any support. So uh, now I'm focused with this group in going and talking to new amputees and, and letting them know that they, have, you know, that there's still hope and that don't give up, you know, and uh, just keep pushing and, and get help and come to our groups and, you know, it, it helps. Good, good. How do you, how do you find how do you? How do they approach you, or do you approach them? Well, <laughs> Carlos. Uh, Carlos, Carlos takes beats care the, of that beats part. the bushes. <laughs> I beat I beat the bushes basically. Uh, since yeah. I'm a one of uh, four peer counselors in the group, um, you actually have to be uh, uh, be a peer counselor uh, through the uh, through a clinic to get certified to go out and talk to these folks, to get them to realize and understand that there's life after amputation. Yes. And I, I'm pretty sure that I've done a pretty good job of that. <laughs> uh, we've, uh, we have a group membership. Well, I won't say it's really a membership. It's a group of 
62 people and about 15 percent of that is family members that come to our groups only because they've had uh, fathers uh, uh, pass away uh, and they still come to our groups oh, group good. meetings yeah. so uh, the, the the other 40 percent are amputees that don't like to get out like we discussed earlier because of the embarrassing situations that they're, that they're in and that's what their mindset is they believe they're they're focusing on they're convinced everybody's looking at them. right and you know when I came out to greet you, the, I, I wasn't sure who you were, but I, I, <laughs> I'm really, I was really conscious that I looked down and saw that, okay, I don't see flesh and blood there. So these are my guests. Um, and so granted, we are, people who are not amputees are extremely conscious of people who are. And so what do you do about that? What, what do you tell the 17-year-old kid or the 15-year-old girl uh, or the, 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 the lady, the, the extremely ladylike lady who has lost her leg? You know, um, I was in physical therapy uh, after my amputation at Southern Roseville, and uh, Carlos showed up. And, uh, talked to me about the group, um, and I kept thinking, oh, it's a support group, you know, I, I don't need a support group, you know, I, I wasn't having any mental issues, and, and I really didn't understand what the group was all about, you know, and so finally he kept bugging me, and pretty, <laughs> pretty soon I, I, showed up, I showed up at a meeting, and, um, and we, tr you know, we try to get people there so they understand um, that there's a lot there for them, and they also have a lot to give to other people. You know, it's a, it's a, a sharing. And the, the most impressive thing that I ever saw, and when I run onto somebody, especially a woman, uh, who's had an amputation, leg amputation, uh, at Sutter Roseville in, at physical therapy one day was a gal, I would guess in her late 30s, very tall, like 5'10", um, from birth. Um, had issues with her legs and eventually had them amputated above the knee. Mm. And she was walking with uh, two prosthetics, uh, five inch heels, and a very <laughs> tight dress. So okay. her, her, her feet aren't going to hurt. No. How wonderful. <laughs> and I think, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking to myself, if she can walk with two prosthetics in those five inch heels, you know, I can learn to walk with one prosthetic, and, uh -huh. I, and I'm not going to wear five-inch heels. No. <laughs> so, you know, it's, a, it's important for those kinds of people who, who really have, uh, I would consider, overachieved to be out in public so, so when somebody, the more media attention there is, uh, and then somebody becomes an amputee, um, they're going to say, well, you know, they seem to be okay, so I should be okay. And how did they get okay? Well, they they went to this gold gold country amputees support group. Yeah. There and there are a lot of good health professionals out there that um, that do help people and and they contribute to our group too. But um, uh, Diane Wilson, who is uh, like our chaplain, um, uh, who is not an amputee but is at most of our meetings. Uh, she found the, the latest yeah, amputee. Lady. Yeah, lady. Yes. The, the latest amputee that um, um, family that started coming to our group. Carlos can tell you more about them. He he actually visited the young man who had lost both his legs. Yes, the the young man uh, that lost both of, both of his legs actually got into a. Uh, he was pinned in between two vehicles. Um, this happened about six. Ow. About six months ago, uh, Nick and I and my wife went out to go visit the family. Uh, through them, though, the family members actually came to our meeting to find out what our group is all about. And they're from all the way in Marysville. Mm. Okay. Wow. And uh, there is basically n a lot of chances for this individual to wake his life up again. And Nick mm -hmm. has been on them. I've been on them. <laughs> so basically, we're all together on this, trying to get the individual to walk. Walk. 
and he's he's, he's, he's an above knee amputee. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be kind of rough for him, but we don't want, we he? don't tell him that. How, how old is he's he? He's twenty five years old. Okay. So he's a, he's. <laughs> yes, Which he's twenty five years old. It's a huge advantage, you know, um, when you lose a limb at an earlier age. Um, it is a you're going to get up and moving faster if you can get your head going that direction. Okay. You know. Um, the older you are, um, when you uh, lose a limb, um, it's, the more it's, difficult it is to change. You know, like it's yeah. like getting a computer when you're 60. Up to seven and a half years ago, uh, this, it was basically I knew nothing about amputations. Uh, I didn't know what an amputee was, to tell you the truth. But when I lost my limb, it's just like looking for a, uh, you're looking at a car that you just bought. Oh, I got the only one. But then all of a sudden you oh. see <laughs> all kinds of them on the road. And that's what happened to me. Okay. Once once it happens to you, you see it you see others who are like you. Yes. Okay. And it's it's like when you when you it's like watching uh, uh, motorcycle motorcyclists passing each other, waving at each other. Exactly. I can imagine. So um, Nick how old were you when you when you lost your legs? I was 32. 32, a young man. Uh, I was you a, didn't feel I, that young. And, I was but, an owner operator, and I hauled logs out of the Sierras to the various mills around. And uh, one Friday, I, I somehow got off the road and, and went into the ditch and wound up uh, against a big tree, and the logs came in and smashed me. So uh, I was life flighted into UC Med Center in Sacramento. I was in a coma for 30 days and died three times, and they got me back. And it, it's, I, I woke up and my dad was standing there, and he asked me if I remember wrecking a truck, and I said, "I never wrecked a truck. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, I didn't know my legs were gone." Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then they started reducing the pain medication, and I found <laughs> out they were gone. It's yeah. very painful. Yes. That was. Uh, my trauma is horrible. It was from trauma. The people that are getting amputated with diabetes and uh, various other things that are not. This isn't quite the same as thing. Bad as the trauma was. Yeah. Uh, I have the PTSD from it. Oh boy. I mean, I. I, I I have dreams at night, and they're just they're nightmares. Yeah. You know of uh, the sure. accident. Sure. Sure. So it's a lot different, but thankfully, uh, Arnie Lund is a man that started uh, businesses uh, locally here years ago. That's now Hanger Supplies. He came to yeah. my bedside, and he 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 told me, he says, "Oh, it's going to be okay. You know, you're going to be all right." He says, "I'm going to build you some legs, and you're going to be walking." I said, you said, okay. no, <laughs> I'm I, not. I said, okay, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Whatever sure. you say. But he did. If that's what you think, you can be crazy like that, that's fine. He was my only support back then. Uh, okay. And so when I finally found this group. Uh, How did you stumble onto it? <laughs> Pardon me. Um, <laughs> you didn't I'm stumble. You, you, I think you, it was you, Reen you, that uh, you, turned you on to it. Um. God, I can't remember how I actually okay. I got involved in the group, but uh, ever since then I've been trying to help others because I've been on them for 30 years and I walk pretty well. Yeah. You know, so it's it, it helps other people that are with fresh amputations to see that it, they're going to get better. You know, so it's my giving back to them for to the new amputees for all the help that I had from the, you know, the medical and the hospitals mm -hmm. and the people that care. Yes. So. Now, was it, all three of you are, are wearing shorts. Are you wearing shorts for this show or are you wearing shorts because it's the 2nd of May? It's hot. It's hot, <laughs> okay. Um, if I could wear shorts all year round, I would. I but it, it does get cold during the winter time. <laughs> I wear them year round. Okay. Shorts year round. For the reason I can get 
get to my things and keep them tight and make sure that I don't have a problem so they don't fall off and I don't fall down. <laughs> you know, okay. So okay. That's the reason why that is. And then I, I, I like to, uh, I like it when kids come up and, you know, and their, their mothers are telling oh, them, no, don't, don't. don't do that, don't do that. And the kids come up, well, what happened to you? And, you know, and I enjoy that, you know, talking to the kids and making them, you know, letting them see it and let them touch it and everything and letting them know that, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, we, we're still people. We just had an accident. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was telling you earlier about, um, I own a hardware store up in Grass Valley and uh, I was wearing shorts yesterday and there was a young kid there, probably about eight or nine years old, and um, there with his dad and he said, boy, that had to hurt when they cut that off, mm -hmm. you know. I said, well, no, it didn't. I was asleep, you know. <laughs> um, and he says, well, why did they cut your leg off? And I said, well, it kind of, the, my leg got sick and there was not any way that they were going to be able to fix it. So uh, they either had to cut my leg off or maybe I wouldn't have lived. But I said, you know, the really great thing is, I said, they make these legs for people like me. Yeah. So you can still be up and walking, yeah. you know. And he was fine with that, you know, the explanation worked. Um, it's, you know, like Nick and, and Carlos and I always talk about, it's really important that the kids understand that, that, that there's, not, there's not a real stigma attached to uh, a person wearing a prosthetic. Uh, for some particular reason, they lost a limb, so this, they're wearing this device so they can be up and semi-normal. You know, I play golf. Um, I keep 50 hives of bees. I, you know, I pretty much do everything that I did before, and I know Nick and Carlos are pretty much the same way. Okay. All right. I... I'm 80% of what I was. I, I lost 20% of my abilities myself. I mean, um, everybody gets these, uh, not everybody, but a lot of people have seen the Blade Runner mm -hmm. from Australia that got in trouble with shooting his girlfriend and then he could run and he was in the Olympics and stuff. Not everybody, not all amputees can do that. Mm -hmm. it, it depends on how long their stump is and how much leverage they have and if they're above the knee or below the knee. There's a lot of things that go into the, you know, facts of if they're going to be able to run or not. He's a special case, you know, very special case. Mm -hmm. He was able to run, and it's too bad that he, I think that he probably, probably didn't have support or something yeah. when he did that with his girlfriend. I don't think he meant to do it. I think he went out of his mind or something. This is the movie you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. No, that, it's that, 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 that true story. That just, oh, the true story. Yeah. South Africa. That, oh, okay. Uh, maybe yeah. you've never heard of it. I, I, just, <laughs> I think we most pay, people have. Yeah, we pay more attention to things that are amputee connected than yeah. probably a lot of other people do. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nick, you were talking about, you, you mentioned, um, it was recently right on the tip of my tongue, the, the, the um, <sighs> hangers. And, hang, and Hangers is on Highway 40. We, we, this isn't a sponsored program, uh, <coughs> but Hangers it helps pros, pros, with prosthetics, uh, correct? And crutches and... Uh, they do prosthetics and orthotics, yeah, but it's just like you said, we're not here to advertise yeah, but, for them. But, but I, I'm perfectly willing to mention them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They are the largest group in the United States. They have about 700 outlets across the oh, United States. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but, right. we, but we have, you know, we probably have a dozen uh, uh, different offices that build uh, these prosthetics, uh, uh, whether it's a below the knee like Nick or above the knee like Carlos and I are, um, or, the, or the artificial arms that, that you see. And uh, we're fortunate. We have some some really pretty good guys who, who are in that business in our particular area. Good. Yeah. Not always true everywhere, so. Yeah. Now, before we started taping, you were having this conversation about somebody who wanted information about sports. Uh, uh, basketball, perhaps? Yes, uh, and, that was the uh, individual, the 25-year-old, that's a double amputee. Uh, he is very, he was into bat playing basketball. Uh, before he lost his, uh, lost his legs. 
he wants to get back into bas playing basketball again or even any type of sports uh -huh. uh, just to keep this kid going. Yes. He's only 25 years old. Yes. We need and to help him possible? out. Is that possible? Oh, yes, yes. There is a wheelchair. You heard that? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> there is a wheelchair uh, uh, basketball association uh, located in Sacramento. I've been trying to get a hold of them, but I just haven't been okay. Facebook back on it yet. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to get this kid involved. Uh, he needs to be involved a lot. He wants to get back up walking. Nick and I are, like I said, we're on him. We want to see him walk. I'm hoping that you saw that sly, sly grin. We want to, we want, we're, we've been on him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're, the, the impression I'm getting is that it is not only possible, but it's a good thing and, and, and a wonderful thing that this, this young man is, apparently believes you. When you get hurt, you feel sorry for yourself. At some point, you've got to stop feeling sorry for yourself and you've got to st stop expecting your family to feel sorry for you. You know what I mean? Yes. And so that's what we're about. I mean, we're amputees, so we go to an amputee, so you know, and try to give them support so that they can see us walk so that they can get it in their mind that they need to walk too. Yeah, <laughs> you know? there is life after amputation. Yeah, sure. some, sometimes it takes tough love uh. um, to get people up and moving, yeah. you know, uh, and Carlos does it extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He does. Yeah. You know, but when, when you go to, um, you know, uh, I'm a peer counselor. Carlos is a peer counselor, and when you go to visit somebody who is a recent amputee, um, how you approach the, those opening conversations oh, come on, and peer are, are we'll so critical. Um, and so you have to be really sensitive um, to them. You really have to listen to them and give them back what they need. You know, you can spiel out all kinds of information, but it's more important to listen. Mm. Okay. Right. Well, Gentlemen, <laughs> thank you very much for joining me. This is fascinating. And I, 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 it's, there is a place to go to learn more about your your loved one's amputation or your own amputation or if if you're facing it you know what you know there's a place to go thank you very much can, can uh, these, these, we get time? yes uh, i think dan wanted to mention something about our we, fundraiser our yes fundraiser, fundraiser. <laughs> yes okay we have one fundraiser a year uh it is a golf tournament uh it's on columbus day in uh october uh it's a monday um the, fu the funds in, in, in the funds that we raise, we use to support amputees. Uh, like we recently gave funds to uh, Shriners, and the funds were directed towards um, children with amputees because you know everything there is um, is funded by donations, and so we specifically wanted that money to go to some, to a kid who needed to have an, uh, mm. some sort of device. To be able to get up and walking, or to uh, to live their live their life, on our website um, there's a lot of information about the uh, uh, golf tournament. But um, you'd be amazed about how many amputees there are out there golfing. Uh, but we're looking for as many whole body people as we possibly can get out <laughs> also. there. Also, also, <laughs> okay. Uh, and like I said, it is the only fundraiser that we do every okay. year. Okay, wonderful. And to to learn more about that that fundraiser go to goldcountryamputees.com right yes okay or email at g g c amputees g at gmail.com this has been wonderful thank you very much gentlemen well thank you for yes the opportunity to talk yes about it. you're welcome yes. and thank you for watching